God is good. Everybody stand up. Let's say, look. Y'all say this with me. Say, look at, read it. We'll say it with me. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be sad again. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory! <laughs> Try not to mess it up, all right? <laughs> all right, here we go. Let's have a look. I'm here today to worship. To worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one, except by worship, the whole Lord. So that again. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one, except by worship, oh Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of you are getting rid of the Father from this place? Amen. It's not going to be long now. We're going to be out of here, and I can't wait. Amen. Amen. Sing it.
how many of you look outside the bed? How many been hot this week? That's kind of putting the kind of mouth in it. You've been hot this week. Man, oh man, has there been something. Amen. On the way up here, I saw two hound dogs chasing a rabbit, and it was so hot they were all three walking. <laughs> Got sound effects now. Isn't that cool? All right, ready? That's it. I feel the rain. Ready? I feel the rain.
alone. And we thank you, God, that you're in total, 100% control. Lord, we know, God, there's never been a time, there's never been a day, there's never been an hour, there's never been a minute that you were not present. And I ask you right now, Lord, to be present here, God, in such a way that we know, we feel, we understand that you're here. Help us, God, to be ready for what's coming. Lord, we see it happening so fast. It's, it's mind-boggling what is happening right now. And we ask you, Lord, to touch Lord, those people in Afghanistan, touch those in Louisiana with, with that Category 5 that's, that's hit. We ask you to touch them all right now in the name of Jesus. Because when one hurts, we all hurt. And we thank you for you, Lord, for being awesome. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said? Amen. Amen, 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 amen. <clears throat> Y'all can be seated. I do want to tell you, you know, uh, <clears throat> thinking about thinking about Revelation, uh, and some people, you know, some people don't believe it. Some people think this is just some kind of fairy tale. Some people think that this is not even going to happen. And then the biggest one I hear, the biggest one, is this stuff's been happening for years. As long as I can remember, there seem to be wars and rumors of wars. As long as I can remember, and then they throw out these 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 cliches and these. Uh, uh, made up half truths that people will say like well you know the Bible says you know when the way the weather is that the Bible says that in the last days you won't be able to tell the weather you won't be able to tell what season it is except for how the, the fig blooms or something and that's not what God said God said when you see the fig bloom you know summer's nigh when you see this stuff happening you know that my coming is nigh the fig tree is blooming church it's happening in front of us as hard as it can and we've got to wake up and see this. But that's why this, this meant so much, this little, this little touching story. It's a very touching story because I, it always touches me when atheists find the Lord. Don't it? Don't it? There's just something special when atheists find the Lord. An atheist was spending a quiet day fishing when suddenly his boat was attacked by the Loch Ness Monster. In one easy flip, the beast tossed him and his boat high into the air then opened its mouth to swallow both. As the man sailed over, head over heels, he cried out, Oh my God, help me! <laughs> At once the ferocious attack scene froze in place. As the atheist hung in midair, a booming voice came down from the clouds, I thought you didn't believe in me. He said, Come on, God, give me a break. The man pleaded two minutes ago, I didn't believe in Loch Ness Monster either. <laughs> <laughs> As people start seeing this unfold, I'm hearing people that don't go to church. I'm hearing people that don't claim anything in their life. They're stopping me and saying, what's going on, man? Can, can you talk to me for a minute? Can, can you just step over here for a minute? You know, here's what my grandma used to say, and here's what my granddaddy used to say, and, you know, and I hear this and this and this, but can, can you tell me what's going on? Because what's happening around me is blowing my mind, and it actually scares me, the stuff that's happening. I have to tell you, the stuff that's going on doesn't scare me. It actually, in one, I mean, the saints really think I need medicine. One side of me, I'm alarmed because I know there's going to be some people where I all might wind up suffering something before this is over. But I'm alarmed for those who are going to be left behind because it's going to be bad. But I also rejoice because I know our time is drawing short. And so that part excites me. All right, so, so I don't need medicine. I, I, you know, I, I'm both sides on that coin. So let's go ahead and let's do this. And, and I'm going to just do a few slides from two weeks ago just so we can have some, 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 some uh, congruency, okay? Uh, uh, Revelation 6, 1 and 2, we just read it. I saw the Lamb open one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given him. And he went forth to conquer, went forth conquering and to conquer. Now that that one little four, one little verse is so full of information. And it tells so much. Even though it's just one verse, it reveals so much. And of course, <clears throat> we're talking about the four horsemen in tribulation. I just want to give a couple of these verses right here, a couple of these slides, and then we're going to go right into it. The tribulation period is one of the most significant periods of God's dealing with mankind. Uh, it occupies a prominent place in this prophetic plan. And believe it or not, you say, well, the words talk about it. It's mentioned over 50 times in the Old Testament. 
50 times plus. And it's mentioned over 12 times in the New Testament. And then when you get to Revelation, we start reading it. And let me just tell you something that was so awesome about this. And I've told it before in the beginning of Revelation, but I just need you to think about this. Because somebody was talking to me the other day, uh, I don't know if I was at Pitt Detention Center or where I was at in the hospital or something, uh, but, but they were talking about uh, John on the Isle of Patmos. And, and you got to understand this. John, they tried to, and some of this is tradition, some of this is, is passed down, uh, history passed down uh, through uh, other historians and other things of that nature, but they tried to boil John with hot oil. They couldn't stand him, what he was talking about. He was talking about God. And so uh, they tried to boil him with hot oil, and he would not burn. They also gouged his eyes out. So here's a man it would not burn, but he cannot see now, and he's on the Isle of Patmos, which is a small island that has rocks all around him, fierce animals, crazy people on the island, and if you tried to get off, no matter what, you would be eaten by the sharks before you got any way out whatsoever. And so here's John, looking like, and in very scantily clothed, and so it looked like John was <coughs> left by everybody, and if you weren't careful, you'd think even God had left. But here's John who cannot see, but in the middle of cannot see, cannot not be able to see, God let him see, showed him something. Very powerful. I was in the spirit of the Lord's day, meaning he was brought to a different level. He was spiritized. He was brought up into the third heaven. He was seeing things. And so now, although he couldn't see earth, he could see heaven and see what was going on. So, so the Revelation chapter 6 is a shock to people's senses because now... Before we talked about heaven, now we're talking about hell coming to earth. Okay? In the past two chapters, we've been allowed to witness the scenes of heavenly worship. And now we're going to be seeing about divine wrath. And so, again, just quickly, bear with me just a minute. For those that haven't been here, they need to see this. Uh, John breaks the seven seals in the book one by one. And as the seals are open, a series of divine judgments are poured out upon the earth. And those who dwell on the earth. These four seals describe the events that will take place during the first 21 months of tribulation. So this is going to be some powerful stuff going on, but you've got to know that God's still in control. He's the one peeling back the seals. He's the one that's watching it and monitoring it. And he knows when it's time to open the next seal and the next seal. So God's watching this. This, this is not, God has not backed away from the earth. Uh, the Holy Spirit has been moved out of the way. Not totally withdrawn from the earth and moved out of the way because the body of Christ, we are the Holy Spirit that dwells with us. We're going to move out of the way. And so just like the Old Testament, there'll be drops and sprinkles of the Holy Spirit moving, but it's not going to be a great thing. It's going to be some small areas where God works greatly in small areas. And, and so, uh, so watch this. Uh, when the Lamb opens the first seal, uh, there is the noise of thunder in heaven. Now this noise of thunder signifies that there's an approach of a storm. What's about the unleashed uh, and is done on this world is beyond description. And so, and remember, these guys, these guys are, think about it 2,000 years ago. Can you imagine when you were a little kid, a little kid, some of us, a little kid's talking about an airplane, you wouldn't figure it out. Y'all Okay. <laughs> But, you know, back in the day, if somebody tried to tell you what a microwave was, huh? Microwave popcorn? Huh? You know, so we had to try to describe it or describe jets or describe some of these the supersonic jets that we did not know about back in the 50s or in the early 60s. So, so the same way these guys are back 2,000 years ago, so they're trying to describe what they see. And some of these guys are 4,000 years ago, the prophets. And so they're trying to describe what they see. So, so here we go. As God shows them what's going on. First, we see the white horse. And, and I'm going to do this quickly because this is the last slide. And then we're going to go right into this week. But in, in Revelation chapter 2, the white horse is it's the white horse of deception. The world right now is so deceived. I, I honestly, my whole, I'm just blown away. And every time I think that it can't blow me away anymore the next day. I hear this turn on the news. Just watch. Listen. Listen as they talk. Listen at what's going on. Listen 
as, as you hear the Congress or as you hear the Senate talk or as you hear our nation talk or you see things. And, and just this week, 13, 13 of our heroes lost their lives. They're heroes. Amen? They're heroes. They lost their lives because of all this craziness, okay? So it says the white horse of deception. Uh, no similarities between here it is. This is the last slide, and we're going to go. You know, we say that the white horse is carrying an important message. At the end of Revelation, Jesus comes back on a white horse, but he's coming from heaven on a white horse, but this is not him. This is at the beginning of tribulation. So let me go ahead and talk about this. This rider, and I believe he's already here. The reason he's out to be already here is because I believe tribulation is getting ready to start. And, and the, the Antichrist will not be revealed until the rapture takes place. And the revealing of the Antichrist is going to happen when the tribulation starts. And if it could start at any moment, and I really believe it could, then in order for that to happen, the Antichrist has already got to be here and he's got to be over 30 years old. Okay? So he's already here. And it's just a matter of him being revealed. And don't make any speculations about who it is because we don't know who it is. Okay? None of us know who it is. But I do see the Antichrist spirit very strongly. Okay? You can see the Antichrist spirit and it's growing and picking up speed. And it's really, really, really getting to the point where, I'm not kidding, it's not going to be long. The Bible will be outlawed for hate speech. It's coming. If you don't think it, don't think it can happen, just watch what's happening around us. It's going to happen, and it's going to happen soon. Okay? Now, that's one of the things I wish I'd never say. Well, I'll just watch and see, because I don't want you to watch and see, but we're going to see it. So this rider wears a crown. Jesus wears many crowns. Uh, this crown, this, this crown is the finest, which is an olive branch, which anybody could wear. But Jesus wears a diadem, the crown of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This rider has a crown given unto him. The world is trying to put him in position. But you know what? Jesus' crown, nobody's putting him in position. He's there because of who he is. And then, this one carries a bow. Jesus carries a sword. The appearing of this rider that we're talking about today signals the beginning of tribulation. The appearing of Jesus coming on a white horse uh, is a uh, Showing the end of tribulation. So let's get ready. We're going to talk about this. Y'all ready? So let me say amen. 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 All right. So 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 now here, here's the here's the the, the the white horse of deception. We're going to see here. Let me get, let me get where, where was I at? I got a little, my finger got happy. All right. The similarities indicate that this man is the Antichrist. He's the little horn in Revelation. So get ready. Taking notes, write them down. You're gonna want, you're gonna need this one day if somebody tries to tell you that this is Jesus, because it's not. Okay? The white horse of deception, get ready. First, watch this. He is a he is a man of peace. This man coming, which will be soon. This man, whoever this man is, he's gonna be a man of peace. Okay? Now, watch this now. This rider has a bow in his hand, but he has no arrows. He comes on the scene as a political superman. This political superman is going to be able to pull all religions together. One of the biggest problems right now, if you're going to try to pull all the religions together, and of course, if you see the, the way it shows, it's going to be, he's going to pull two major religions together. One, of course, is going to be Islam. Another, of course, is going to be Christianity. How can he pull those two together? Because Islam believes Jesus in Jesus, and they believe he was a prophet. They believe that. But they don't believe that he's deity, and they don't believe that he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. So in order for the Antichrist to gain traction and bring all these together, then somebody's going to have to start teaching that Jesus was not the King of kings. And the Lord of Lords. He's just a prophet. And there's a lot of places around the land. I, don't, I can't tell you who and how and when. I just know I hear it. There's a lot of places around this land. Where people now are disclaiming the deity of Christ. They no longer believe he's the son of God. They just believe he was a prophet. 
And so if a Christian believes that and a Muslim believes that, they can be face to face and everything's fine. So you've got to guard it and watch it. If anybody's trying to take away the deity of Christ, remember that's the spirit of Antichrist. And it's here and it's active and I've heard it. You can turn on the television. You can hear it. You see it. It's very apparent. Okay, so he comes in on a platform of peace. He comes in like he's going to solve all the world's problems. He has no arrows, so because of that, he rides in here on this, this platform uh, of peace. And so Daniel tells us that when, the, when he comes in and ushers in this false peace, he's going to make a treaty with Israel. It's going to be a seven-year peace treaty with Israel. The problem is this peace treaty with Israel, he's going to break it mid-tribulation, and it's going to kick off the great tribulation. It's the tribulation and the great tribulation. This is the tribulation. This is already all hell's breaking loose, but it's still not full as it's going to be. The second three and a half years, that has been all hell is on earth. It's very something very powerful in the in, for Satan is going on at this time. But the Antichrist, because he's a man of peace, he's going to win his crown through diplomacy. He's going to want to talk it out. We're going to talk about this. Got the power. But I'm not going to use it. I got a bow, but I'm not going to use it. Instead, we're going to use diplomacy. And we know already. We know. We see. We understand. There is times where it needs to be diplomacy. There's other times where diplomacy just is not going to work. But this man's going to come along, and when he comes along, he's going to dazzle the people, and they're going to believe that he can just kind of. Here it is, and people are going to lay down, and it's going to be something crazy going on. Okay? So I'm going to see a man of peace. Get ready. This white horse of deception, he is a man of power. The Bible says in that verse, he went forth conquering and to conquer. Okay? His sole purpose was to obtain power. If you, if you look right now, watch our people now that are in Congress and are in the Senate and even working around the White House in the White House. It's no longer about the people. It's about power. Amen. It's all about power. That's it. All about power. Because everybody has the same canned speech and when they get in office you no longer can see what they said they were going to do. Why? Because it is not about people. It is about Power. Okay, so now he comes here with the, and, and they, the sole purpose is to take power. They, they give a crown to him, but he's going to be the most evil dictator the world has ever seen. Now, in Ezekiel 38 and 39, that great war, there's going to come a time, it's either going to be just before the rapture or just after the rapture. Uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39, Gog, Gog and Magog, that war is going to take place in Russia. Is going to be supernatural. Russia is going to come to destroy Israel. Russia and their allies are coming to destroy Israel. And God's going to supernaturally destroy Russia. And whoever powers up with Russia to take on Israel, God's going to supernaturally do away with them. So all this is going on. And it's going to give the, the, the white horse even more power because of this. So now... He's a man of power. He's a, he is a man of, watch this, pretense. He's not the man that he appears to be. Matter of fact, he comes promising peace. But you know what? Peace, peace. Then sudden destruction. He'll be the most evil, again, the most evil dictator this world has ever seen. This man is also going to be the great counterfeiter. He does all to imitate Christ. Matter of fact, he does it so much that he deceives the masses. He's going to be able to explain why all these Christians were taken out of here, why these churches are empty, why the rapture had taken place. He's going to be able to tell everybody. He's going to get the Jews. The Jews are going to believe he's finding the Messiah they've been looking for and they worship him. There's so much going on. 
during this time. That's when he writes this peace treaty with the Jews. The Jews are going to believe, like I said, that he's the true Messiah until Satan inhabits. Listen carefully. During, the, during three and a half years, in the middle way, just before the Great Tribulation, Satan literally comes down to earth and embodies the Antichrist. And when he embodies the Antichrist, then he starts hunting down the Jews to destroy them. Wow. That's some powerful stuff. Matter of fact, when all this begins to happen, all hell breaks loose. But you don't have to experience what's coming. Today is the day <laughs> of salvation. If you get by the army, you saw this week where I said there's nothing, absolutely nothing you could have done that could keep God from loving you. Nothing. Jesus loves you. Brandon, come up here and play something soft. Tell you what we'll be long today. Brandon, come on up here and play something soft. Everybody stand. Today, every head bowed, every eye closed. Today is the day of salvation. According to what I read, once that record takes place, once tribulation starts, it's going to be rough. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. Because all that's going on. With every head bowed, every eye closed, let me ask this question. Are you ready for what's coming? Are you ready for what's coming? God's got something special. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Kitty. Kitty's up in Virginia. Her lungs are filling up with fluid and she's not doing good. So let's remember Kitty. This is this is a very, very serious, serious thing to you. Let's remember Kitty. She needs she needs God's touch. Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for all you do for us, Lord. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch Kitty. Let her know that you've got her, that you can work in her life, Lord. Touch her lungs, Lord, that's filling up with fluid. Touch her body, Lord, that's failing. Lord, minister to her mightily right now. Touch her family to help them, Lord, to know what to do and how to do. And God, we thank you for that healing right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And if there's anybody here right now, you don't have to come up here, but if there's anybody right here, well, every head's bowed and every eye's closed, except for those that's walking. I want their eyes open. If you're here today and you're not ready, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I know this is going to sound, sound kind of crazy, but why is it? So many fall for the Antichrist is because he has pulled the wool over so many people's eyes. And once the rapture takes place and the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way, the 
Antichrist can yield his power from his mouth, his diplomacy, and he can, look, he's going to get the Jews to think he's Christ, and he's going to get a lot of people to think he's Christ, and they're going to start worshiping him. And I can promise you, when that takes place, and especially when you take that mark, it's game over. So today, right here, right now, today's the day of salvation. If you're here, every head bowed, every eye closed, and you're not ready, or you're not close like you want to be, I just want you right now, real quick, I want you to raise that hand. Raise that hand. And so I want to make sure that I'm ready. I want to get closer. Let's all, let's all pray together. Father, I rededicate my life to you. I know that time is short. And I know that we can't do this without your help. I rededicate my life, all that I am, all I'll ever be, to you right now. In the name of Jesus. Touch and anoint everybody here. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. Give Lord a hand clap. Isn't Brandon doing a great job? Oh, yeah. Yeah, awesome job. You make you want to grab my face and get there and play. Yeah. Been doing good. Just remember, when that white horse comes down, all hell is breaking loose, but by the middle of tribulation, all hell will break loose. You think Satan's tough today? Just wait. Okay? That's that. Y'all ready? Tuesday night, come on. We're trying to talk about triggers. Uh, last week I was going to do it, but that went, uh, DC uh, graduated from, from, from Fire College, and so uh, so I went there with him when he graduated. And so this week we've been trying to get it started, and because of the you know COVID and all this stuff, so this week we're going to start talking about triggers, and we're not talking about Roy Rogers' uh, <laughs> horse. <laughs> all right, oh, Silver, that's Silver, that's right? Trigger was his dog. All right. Silver was his dog. We're not talking about Silver the 